la salle. Messieurs, Monsieur bienvenue. Fan club <rire> Bonjour. In the, uh... In the audience. Bonjour. Gentlemen, Alors, évidemment, l'accès à l'énergie pour tous, ça faisait morning. sens hein, de commencer cette matinée au Politique euh, Energy for All. Par cet enjeu, parce This que, is, voilà, pas d'énergie, pas d'électricité, uh, pas d'électricité, uh, pas d'ordinateur, uh, donc plutôt d'infrastructure. Donc, juste un chiffre hein, pour, uh, pour uh, se faire une première idée de l'équation. Si on prend l'exemple de l'Afrique, un continent d'un virgule deux milliards d'habitants aujourd'hui, les deux tiers de la population n'ont pas accès à l'énergie, donc à la lumière. Uh, any représente access to energy, uh, therefore to lighting, so uh, and 650 million people who've got a very difficult access to health, education, transport, Alors, uh, and uh, uh, all these areas of uh, uh, life uh, that uh, necessitates uh, uh, energy. So what can be the role of energy in this uh, uh, environment? Uh, starting with you, Jacques Attali, going back to Africa, Uh, it's a tipping point, uh, 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 isn't it? Because uh, uh, just like uh, the uh, uh, quantum leap uh, in technology, uh, in mobile technology in Africa, it seems that it's going to be the case for electricity as well. Yes, indeed. And I'm very happy to have Gerard with us uh, today because it seems that uh, uh, there is some contradiction between improving the uh, or, or fighting uh, climate change and uh, fighting poverty, uh, because uh, some argue uh, uh, that uh, uh, in order to uh, control climate change, we should not uh, provide energy to everyone, uh, and which is absolutely absurd. And so we have to reconcile these two uh, objectives and make sure that everybody gets access to uh, power uh, without harming the uh, uh, environment. Now, NG started on this uh, for many years now. We started uh, programs in China together, and this is a, 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 it's a crucial objective. Angus Deaton uh, said yesterday that policy is uh, disappearing uh, gradually from the uh, uh, from the uh, Earth. Uh, this is very optimistic, uh, I, I must say, because uh, uh, poverty, which uh, in fact equals to no energy, no water, uh, is uh, quite uh, um, uh, prevalent in Africa. And, uh, and uh, But things are uh, uh, changing as far as uh, power supply is concerned, and we think that energy is going to be uh, uh, accessible to uh, uh, the widest number, to the largest uh, number of people uh, without uh, uh, any detrimental effect on uh, climate. Now, uh, I'm taking the uh, example of Africa to uh, uh, flesh out uh, this theme and uh, anchor it into reality now, year now. In North Africa, and you've got a BU, oui, avez, which is specifically raison, dedicated to Africa. Thank you very much. Avec, uh, Indeed, uh, Jacques, uh, and thank you for your question. Access to energy uh, has been one of our top priorities uh, for Suez uh, already, and then NG 20 years ago. We uh, said how uh, important uh, it was to get access to water uh, and uh, energy, but we knew that uh, uh, the, te the technology at the time required uh, hundreds of billions or millions of dollars to uh, make it uh, accessible to uh, uh, everyone. And uh, you see there are 1.2 billion people uh, who have no access to energy uh, around the world. Um, this has changed a lot uh, as far as uh, power supply costs are concerned, which isn't the case for water supply. Uh, you see, in uh, power supply, in the electricity generation with the uh, uh, solar panels and with the uh, storage systems, uh, um, we've uh, seen the way uh, energy uh, power is uh, generated and distributed and transported. Uh, um, uh, changed dramatically with a, a sharp reduction in costs. And during COP21, 
I was in charge uh, of the business dialogue in the run-up to the uh, COP21 conference. And uh, so 40 companies uh, um, from all over the world uh, were asked to uh, issue recommendations. Uh, um, this is what the French government uh, asked us to do. To do. And uh, I wanted to, I tabled two uh, suggestions, one on uh, the price of carbon, uh, which is accepted, and another one which hasn't been uh, uh, sanctioned by uh, COP21. And this second theme I wanted to uh, include in the uh, discussions during COP21 is the um, access to energy, because you see uh, it's possible now to generate electricity and uh, with uh, $100 of equipment uh, with solar panels and battery and two uh, sockets for, uh, for a lamp and, uh, and one for a mobile phone, uh, it's possible to equip people and uh, change their lives because this means lighting at night. This means people being able to read, uh, children being able to do their homework. So uh, $100. And let's say there are some 500 million households with no access to energy, which uh, uh, in fact means uh, um, only $10 billion per year uh, to equip these 500 million households, uh, which means only 10% of the amount of money that the uh, um, industrial countries have committed to uh, Africa uh, as a uh, money transfer. Uh, and uh, this would be absolutely logical because we would then be able to uh, fight poverty and uh, um, at the same time um, uh, improve or uh, or fight climate change since solar panels do not emit any CO2. And at a cost which is fully, uh, completely affordable. So this is why with planet finance and positive planet, uh, um, right from the start, we've been working on these issues. Now from the uh, production point of view and industrial point of view, we created uh, an African BU uh, uh, within NG and uh, we uh, focus on uh, uh, facilities themselves. We've, uh, uh, we've built a 300 uh, megawatt wind farm in uh, uh, Morocco. Uh, and uh, because we think that uh, distributed energy uh, uh, generation uh, is a possibility for all households to get access to electricity. And you also work with uh, uh, startup companies in Africa. Yes, indeed. We've created, uh, we created uh, uh, an entity which, is, uh, which brings together uh, um, various stakeholders. Uh, um, first, uh, uh, it uh, includes the, uh, the NG Foundation, the NG Trust, uh, to support uh, the uh, development of uh, new facilities. And we've got uh, a small army of volunteers uh, uh, who are involved in humanitarian work. And uh, we've got a fund. Uh, there is also a fund uh, financed by NG. And ten not only the, did the company uh, uh, put some money in, uh, in this fund, but uh, 10,000 of our employees uh, also contributed to the fund in order to support uh, social entrepreneurs and so we've got stakes in social uh, enterprises uh, that work in Uganda or Bangladesh uh, or, uh, well uh, across Africa uh, generally speaking now this is very interesting you see this is uh, um, this is a uh, philanthropy but uh, with a vested interest and this is the tipping point here this is the uh, uh, the change uh, in our philosophy uh, ie uh, instead of being uh, uh, self centered we uh, um, try to support others and uh, at the same time we can uh, also uh, uh, 
earn some uh, benefits, uh, financial benefits. And uh, uh, in Africa, there'll be uh, uh, two billion people in Africa, half of them uh, um, uh, under 20. So uh, uh, not only does Africa need more electricity today, but uh, this, uh, there's going to be an ex exponential uh, increase in uh, electricity uh, uh, needs uh, in uh, um, in uh, the next decades, and this is going to be a, a formidable uh, challenge. Uh, Orange uh, published uh, its uh, figures recently, and it's, it shows that uh, Orange Africa is more profitable than uh, Orange France, and this is exactly what uh, uh, we're going to see in the coming years in, in the electricity field. Of course, uh, um, We'll still rely on large facilities, but uh, we'll have to use uh, uh, smaller structures uh, uh, in order to provide access to electricity to one billion or more uh, people. Uh, and you see, it's uh, very similar to what uh, happened in the mobile uh, business, uh, because almost all Africans have got mobile phones now. And um, solar panels are uh, quite uh, interesting, and possibly they could be uh, they could be produced in Africa one day. Uh, they've got uh, the raw materials uh, needed to do so. So I, I, um, I think that. Uh, 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 you know, after laying down the foundation, uh, you are going to enter the phase of uh, uh, industrialization. Yes, indeed, uh, we are at this turning point, and uh, and uh, there is a, a ramp up, uh, indeed. And we think that the energy development in Africa will follow two routes uh, that uh, are complementary, of course. Uh, there'll be some uh, base uh, uh, base load generation uh, uh, facilities uh, uh, with, uh, uh, of course, uh, facilities that uh, can be uh, re uh, renewables uh, with uh, hydropower in particular, uh, because the central part of Africa has got huge uh, hydropower potential. Uh, solar energy uh, is available everywhere, uh, obviously, and uh, um, wind uh, power uh, is available in the northern part and the southern part of Africa of the continent. So, and because uh, there is uh, 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 more and more inhabitants in large cities, uh, uh, they won't be able to rely solely on uh, um, standalone uh, power generation. They will need large facilities, and we are quite uh, uh, strong in uh, Morocco, Algeria, and we're going to grow in Central Africa and East Africa, and we're going to install large facilities, larger facilities, including with uh, uh, solar uh, power, and we uh, just uh, won a bid uh, uh, for a concentrated solar uh, energy uh, uh, facility. Uh, uh, everybody is aware of solar panel and photovoltaic panels, uh, uh, which produce uh, electricity uh, during the day, but never during the night. Now, of course, with battery storage, you can store a, lo a smaller, a small quantity or small amount of electricity, but not large quantities. Whereas the concentrators concentrate uh, solar rays. Uh, on um, tubes uh, um, where uh, molten uh, sodium runs uh, or flows, and uh, uh, so it's, uh, it produces uh, heat, and uh, with heat, it's possible to uh, uh, store this heat and then uh, drive a turbine power to generate electricity at night. So that's another way of uh, compensating uh, the uh, biggest, uh, or one of the biggest uh, problem with renewables, uh, i.e. Uh, the fact that these are intermittent power. 
uh, of forms, and you uh, get, uh, you can generate power at a, you, sometimes uh, when people don't so need it. So you need to be able to store it. It's a major project, uh, 600 million dollars that we just won. That's the, you know, the centralized uh, uh, generation system. But of course, uh, there is going to be a, a need for decentralized systems. So in Africa, we are going to uh, just skip one of the stages we went through in Europe. So uh, uh, you know, with uh, large facilities for uh, generation and uh, trans trans transmission lines and so on and so forth. Just like for mobile phones, uh, uh, thanks to uh, latest uh, um, advances in technology, we're going to be able to skip that phase and uh, uh, do away with uh, um, large transformers and uh, overhead lines and, and so on and so forth and, and focus on small decentralized uh, uh, generation uh, facilities. Uh, of course, uh, we'll still have centralized uh, power systems for large uh, cities and uh, decentralized uh, generation systems, mainly based on photovoltaic systems, to supply uh, power to uh, small com communities. Now, photovoltaic panels are highly uh, uh, versatile and modular, and uh, um, and uh, it's you know you can scale them up or down uh, up to 1,000 megawatt. This is what we are going to build in Budapest, and uh, but you can also generate only uh, just a few watts, uh, for instance, with a, a, a photovoltaic. Uh, um, um, a system on your mobile phone. Uh, so you can scale up or down, and this is very important. When the French government decided uh, 10 years ago to subsidize, subsidize uh, solar power, uh, the uh, purchasing uh, price uh, used to be 700 euros. Uh, it's down to 70 euros these days. So, uh, divided by 10, you see, uh, and in uh, uh, countries with a lot of uh, sun, um, uh, sunshine, uh, it's around $30. So you see that the, there's been a considerable drop in uh, rates and uh, generation uh, costs uh, for solar power is uh, lower uh, than uh, nuclear uh, 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 power generation costs. Now, it could also be uh, free of charge at one point in time. For instance, in Chile, uh, Chile these days, uh, there, there's so much sunshine uh, that people uh, were able to get electricity uh, free of charge. Well, you can always uh, say that it's going to be uh, free of charge, but uh, someone is going to pay to foot the bill at one point in time. Uh, of course, you can always say, well, <laughs> The other ones uh, should be uh, uh, should be the payers, but in Chile, you see, it's a it's an over um, a production, uh, and uh, but it won't go on forever. Uh, at one point in time, they'll have to invest in infrastructure. Now, uh, power uh, that would be free uh, for everyone, well, maybe the, the day we are able to build facilities, solar facilities, that, uh, with a, a service life of 50 years. Uh, but, uh, well, we are not that far yet, uh, and I think we're just priming the pump, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is going to be difficult. Uh, of course, this technology is absolutely uh, uh, great, uh, uh, It's uh, but uh, providing energy to 800 million people, can you imagine, uh, in the rural areas, but and 800 million people in large cities uh, <clears throat> uh, and also uh, to people who live in uh, uh, slums around large cities uh, uh, and uh, uh, and maybe one day some positive energy buildings uh, will uh, uh, be uh, constructed in, in Africa. Uh, it started in China, and I'm absolutely convinced that in uh, the Cape or Abidjan or 
uh, Dakar, uh, there could be a, a positive uh, energy buildings. But the first step is really to make sure that everyone uh, get, gets access to energy. energy. Well, you know, energy won't be free of charge, I unfortunately, not soon. No, what's free is a, uh, the sun, the wind, water, no, for the uh, no, hydropower plants, but electricity as such is not free of charge because you need to transform that energy uh, into electricity, into power. So you need specific equipment. If you build a dam, for example, that's extremely expensive to build, but when it's been built, uh, the water still runs through it. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, this comes out of the cost because you need to maintain the dam. And this is also true for uh, photovoltaic panels. Uh, no, right now, uh, the uh, lifespan uh, uh, is approximately 15 to 20 years, and they, the yield also decreases over time. Jacques also talked about energy efficiency. I should have I mentioned this also. Because in our project, in our industrial project of NG, we believe that our role that has been that of a uh, power supplier, now, either gas or electricity, and, and there used to be a monopoly in France, so gas in France and electricity in Belgium, now we present in 70 countries. But this role is evolving uh, because this commodity is uh, available, it's uh, rather cheap, and it's uh, really available in greater quantities, and this is the case for gas and for electricity. And then our role is that of a partner that is here to support and accompany our customers, our clients in this transition. Customers can be uh, individuals, companies, uh, local governments. Uh, right now at NG, we have 150,000 employees. 50,000 of us do what people actually see, so producing electricity, what the third uh, electricity or power supply worldwide, and number three as far as gas is concerned. But 100,000 people with an energy are actually involved in energy efficiency. So are, is this going to, is this trend going to uh, change even further? Yes. And what we offer our clients is uh, obviously is the energy supply, but our customers uh, want to manage that energy. Uh, they sometimes even want to produce it, or some of it. And now this is made possible with the use of a, a local a power production facilities. You know, you can have a, a, a solar panel. Uh, well, we have them on the roofs of the houses right now. In the future, we'll probably have them on our cars and our smartphones, so you will be able to produce your own electricity. And the, and the day electricity is free, free of charge, well, then the uh, power producers uh, will be uh, 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 facing uh, uh, <laughs> another type of problem. And this is why you started providing services. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, all about anticipating. And we are number one worldwide in the energy efficiency sector. 4 billion euros turnover. Because the main source of energy tomorrow will be uh, the energy that is not being consumed. It's a energy saving, so we'll have to invest into new technologies, uh, the Internet of Things, for example, will play an essential role in this. Uh, also, the way people behave, the way people consume power, energy, uh, obviously, uh, and the behavior so will have to be monitored in a specific way in order to avoid any uh, excesses. And the distinction between producer and consumers is going to disappear gradually. 
dans un domaine qui m'est cher et qui est toujours en avance, c'est la musique. And this is already happening in the music industry. Everyone wants to do music now. People don't just only want to listen to music, they want to produce music themselves. And if you watch someone they know using their computer or their cell phone, you don't know whether they are simply working, whether they are simply watching something, if they are having a good time or if they're doing something more serious. If no, and, but they're using the same device to do this. Or sometimes you have to pay uh, in order to use the device, or sometimes you're paid in order to use the same device. So everything is being blurred. And uh, Ja talked about uh, networks earlier on. Now, if someone has a, uh, a source of energy in a village, he'll have the possibility to sell it to his neighbors. And if that person is an entrepreneur, uh, who has an entrepreneurial spirit, uh, that person will probably even decide to produce uh, more uh, energy and sell it to others. So, you know, we have some monopolies in some countries, but I'm sure that things will become more decentralized in the future. I don't know what Gérard thinks about all this. Well, I fully agree with Jack. Uh, no, things are changing, the concepts are evolving. We talk a lot about circular economy. Well, yes, especially this morning. Yes, I agree with you. Positive economy also. And what we do is uh, develop uh, the concept of positive uh, uh, economy and circular economy. So, uh, circular energy. What is circular energy? Well, if you have gas, natural gas, and you can produce electricity, you know, you use a turbine and you have electricity. And this is a way to produce electricity. It's a low carbon way to produce electricity. CO2 emissions are much lower than with a carbon or coal powered uh, power plant. For example, so it is, you know, gas and renewable energies are really true complementary because renewable energies are an intermittent source of energy so when there is no wind and no sun then it's the gas uh, fired power plants that uh, take over so we know how to produce electricity uh, with gas but we don't know how to produce gas using electricity. But we're working on this. For example, when there is a lot of wind in the north of Europe, there are so many wind turbines that the electricity that is produced uh, is a produced in such great quantities that they it uh, cannot be consumed by uh, everyone. So, uh, and uh, we, it is being sold at a uh, negative rate. Now, you have to pay people to take your uh, electricity. So, if, now you, we could try and find solutions to store that electricity. No, batteries are not really a solution right now because you can only store small quantities. But uh, hydrogen uh, could be a good. Uh, a transition. You have a, a this, uh, surplus electricity, you pass it through electrolyzers, and then you produce hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen can be used by hospitals, and hydrogen, uh, that's a, a energy uh, in the form of gas uh, that can be stored. So we're already carrying out experiments. We did this in Dunkirk. Uh, with Michel Delbar at the time. So we mix hydrogen with natural gas, 10 or 15 percent hydrogen. It's called ETAN. And we uh, use it uh, uh, on buses in order to run the buses, to power the buses. And uh, the gas is uh, uh, also being distributed in a eco neighborhood for private consumption. So it's a way to recycle electricity. We're talking about uh, renewable electricity, and in this case it's uh, wind energy, and it is being transformed into gas. The next step would be to take the hydrogen and uh, mix it with CO2, in this case, we would destroy CO2, which is good for the climate, and we would produce CH4, which is methane. So this is really circular, as you can see. This is circular energy. We have gas. You produce electricity. And uh, using that electricity, uh, you uh, can produce gas again. 
And if you do this in an efficient way, then you can have a positive uh, circle. Say, we are coming to an Iraq discussion, and Jacques I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, uh, is a, a moving towards light? Is it also uh, moving away from obscurantism? Well, this is true. You know, if a child has no electricity, no light, then that child cannot learn properly, this child cannot uh, uh, read, uh, cannot uh, be free, and this child will always uh, uh, be dependent on the adults uh, who don't necessarily uh, have uh, the same beliefs as the, the child. And they, so power, electricity, means freedom for uh, young people. So I think that uh, energy truly brings light to those people. And all those uh, sitting in this room today might be wondering what they can do. Well, first, uh, please support us at Positive Planet, that we have uh, more funding, more um, means, uh, greater means in order to fund our projects, uh, and also the NG teams here in this region and elsewhere uh, are available to uh, uh, merci, provide merci assistance, and maybe we can all help each other. Thank you. Thank you.